No Film School's coverage of NAB is brought to you by Limelight, makers of professional lighting for independent filmmakers. My Road Reel International Film Contest. Enter at myroadreel.com. Hey, so this is Joe. I'm here at the Sony booth, and we're looking at the new A7S. Tell me a little bit about this camera. Well, well, welcome to the Sony booth first. This is a really exciting model for us, probably one of our bigger announcements this year, um, if not the biggest announcement that we've had. So this is the A7S. This is the third iteration or the third model in our A7 lineup. So we started off with the A7, which is a 24 megapixel full frame sensor. Then we, and it's got phase detection on uh, the sensor. So it's a really great all round camera, fast shooting, very easy to, uh, for any pro photographer to go out and capture anything that they need. Then we have the A7R, the R stands for resolution. That's a 36 megapixel camera with no low pass filter. So it's gonna focus slower than the A7, but if you put it on a tripod, you can shoot those massive, you know, uh, Ansel Adam tile, you know, super high resolution images. That I can see a lot of fine photographers or landscape photographers shooting there. This is the S, this is the latest version. Uh, the S stands for sensitivity, and that comes from the 12 megapixel full frame sensor. So it's got a massive uh, full frame sensor with 12 megapixels, which means each individual pixel is so much larger that it has a lot more light gathering capabilities. So that, so the big pe uh, megapixels, that allows you to get really sensitive in low light. What, are, what is the actual, uh, how far can you go ISO wise with the camera? All right, so yeah, you're absolutely correct. So the sensitivity actually works on both ends of the spectrum. One end is super low light capability. So this will actually focus in minus four EV. So that's like less than a candlelight. It's almost called a candlelight. The camera can actually see and focus in that type of light. So it makes it a really good low light camera without being, you know, without uh, giving you a lot of that grain or that noise that you get from um, other cameras that have to be bumped up in ISO. However, if you do want to push the ISO, it'll go all the way from 50 to 409,600, wow. which is pretty insane. Yeah. The second benefit of the sensor being so sensitive and the bigger pixels is a much, much higher dynamic range. So even shooting in light, very bright outdoors uh, situations, you get a lot of uh, uh, tonal gradation and you get a lot of detail everything from the shadows to the highlights. And you don't have blown out highlights. You know, you see a beautiful blue sky, you actually see detail in clouds and not just, you know, a washed out sky if you get the shadows. So you'll get everything in between on this. Well, compared to your other cameras, where might this one dynamic range wise be with some of your other models? Even some of your Cine cameras, like how would this compare to like an F5 or an F55? You know, I have no idea right now. We've just got these cameras in. Um, my guess is going to be pretty good for the camera that it is. I don't know where it's going to compare to the other higher end ones. Yeah, okay. we're expecting really good things out of it though. Uh, and it, going back to ISO for just a second, uh, what is the video ISO and what is the ideal range uh, in terms of noise that you might recommend? So I haven't shot with this yet. You know, I can only uh, talk about uh, content that I've seen. I've only really seen one video that was produced by a, a Scottish DP, uh, Dan Lenny. He's the guy that uh, did our original video. Um, but he's got you know footage that we're having a look at at 6400 uh, ISO, which looks absolutely crisp, you know, and clean. I don't know how far you'll be able to push it further than that. Um, uh, you know, I'm sure they're going to have a ton of people grabbing this camera and testing it in the near future. So in now, uh, so this camera does 4K and 1080, but the 4K is only externally. Correct, so it actually has three uh, codecs in it. MP4, which is a real simple codec, easy to for you know, shooting something, dragging and dropping to the web. It has the traditional uh, AVC HD, which is the advanced video codec for HD, that goes up to um, 1920, 1080, 24p, 30p, 60r, 60p, but only up to 28 megabits per second. And now we have the new codec, which is a XAVC-S. It's the long up version of the XAVC codec. That can go up to 1920, uh, 1080, same frame rates, 24, 30, 60, and 60p, uh, but up to 50 megabits per second. So you're looking at broadcast quality bit rates. In addition to that, you can crop, the, crop in for a 720 and uh, push the camera to 120 frames a second for four five times slow motion. And then for 4K output, through the HDMI, you can actually get full HD out, uncompressed, so putting it into an external recorder like an Atomos Ninja or something like that, you'll be able to get you know, uncompressed you know, ProRes at 150 megabits per second. Um, uh, Atomos has announced a, uh, a new recorder. That we Shogun. Have, uh, the Shogun, correct, which can record 4K. So this will output 422 8-bit 4K at 30p, 24 or 30p, and the Shogun will be able to record that. And what is the bit depth at, at 1080? 8-bit. 
Okay, so tell me a little bit about the uh, the pro video features of the camera. All right, because this is said to be such a good video camera, we also threw in additional pro features. So it has the uh, S-Log2 gamma, it has picture profiles, and it also allows you then to set up a profile in the camera and if you're doing a multiple camera shoot, you could save those profiles onto the SD card and transfer that to other cameras that, that are in your shoot. Uh, it has time code, um, there's uh, zebra function, peaking, guard frame, uh, audio level controls. So there's a lot of other features in here that allow you to treat this like a real uh, high-end uh, professional camera that it is. So the, the S-Log, will that be, can that be sent out of the HDMI so that you can actually view that in the S-Log mode or will it just record that way? I believe it would be able to go out to HDMI. I'm not 100% sure. I've been told that it would and that, the, uh, for instance, the, the Atomos uh, Shogun should be able to uh, look at that. And I know they're looking at the Rec. 709, so the, you should be able to match it quite well. Okay, great. So now this lens mount is an E-mount, correct? That's correct. So with the E-mount lens, as you know, you know our E-mount system has the 18mm flange back. This makes it really versatile and being able to put any other lens on here because most lenses um, have spaces made up you know, over the years when uh, lenses used to have mirrors in front of them and that type of thing for moving mirror cameras. So you know, taking this off, there are a number of native cinema lenses. Obviously we have um, you know, our FS700 and FS100 cameras that will use cinema lenses. This is a, a Carl Zeiss uh, 70 to 200 F2.9 uh, lens. This is a proper cine lens. This fits directly onto the camera. But if you have other lenses in your system that you, you know, want to upgrade to get a better camera and you have some other lenses, you might you know, have a couple of Canon lenses lying around, for instance. Here I'm using a Metabones adapter that has electronic control for the uh, focus and the uh, uh, aperture. And this can just clip straight on. So here I'm going uh, E-mount through a, an adapter to a Canon mount. What I can also do is put any of our existing A-mount lenses on here. So I could use the Sony E-mount to A-mount. And uh, as you know, we have a lot of the Carl Zeiss lenses in our lineup of A-mount lenses. Uh, also the uh, you know, high telephoto zoom and the prime uh, G-series lenses. So this really makes it uh, very versatile. Uh, earlier on, somebody came past the booth and we had a, uh, a Noctilux uh, 59.5 lens on here. Okay. You know, here's a, a PL mount for the folks that are into cine. So here I can adapt onto a PL. So this really makes it a super, super versatile uh, system um, that can really adapt to practically any lens. I haven't come across a lens we couldn't put it on it yet. Yeah, pretty much almost any lens I ever made, almost. Correct, almost, yeah, yeah. Okay, so tell me about the audio of, of the A7S. So the, the, the A7S has a stereo microphones, uh, really good quality audio. You can also control the audio from the uh, camera menu. It has uh, um, audio level. Uh, but in addition to that, most of our Sony uh, uh, MI shoes aren't just for flash adapters, but there's a 20 pin adapter right, or 20 pins inside, which you can put on additional audio. So for instance, here I have an XLR box. I can adapt this uh, to the, to there. Now I get proper balanced audio. It's not you know, coming through the, the mini jack. This is proper balanced uh, audio from an XLR and I have full control. This could be used in the rigs, for instance. Here we have a uh, A7S set up as a cinema camera. I have an HDMI out going into the uh, Atomos for a 4K recording. I have a Pro mic on top with balanced XLR and a matte box, a uh, Carl Zeiss uh, Cine lens. So this is really set up for a full motion picture. Now, and the audio levels can be adjusted while recording? Yes, correct. Okay, so now we're looking at the battery system uh, for the A7S. Right, so as you can see, it's a really, really small bat uh, uh, camera, so it has a very small battery. I don't know what the battery life is yet. You know, we haven't tested the camera, but it uses the same standard W series battery that we use on uh, all our E-mount cameras. If you want to extend the life of the battery, we do have a vertical grip, which takes two batteries. This so serves two purposes. One is doubles your battery life, obviously, and the second thing is you can now shoot, if you're shooting uh, still photography, you know, you're shooting vertically in portrait, it's easier to turn portrait because all your buttons are still in the same position, so I can shoot portrait photography this way. Um, if that's not enough for you, the, you can charge the camera, but you can also run the camera through the USB power. Okay. So, for instance, you can get one of those little uh, USB power packs and then just run it through that as well. And that'll actually, well. So will that charge the battery or run the camera or both? Both. Yeah. Okay. And also, you mentioned too that there's actually, you can uh, put the battery door inside the battery grip. Yeah, so it's a very clever design. So since the, the, the battery goes into that, uh, the, the battery socket to make the connection, um, you can see that if you take the door off, it attaches onto the grip so you don't lose the door, which I thought was quite smart.
Okay, so how much is this going to cost and uh, when can people get their hands on it? So there's a, unfortunately the only two questions I can't really answer for you. We're not 100% sure, but we do know that the camera will probably be sooner than uh, later. Uh, I'm hoping to see it obviously, you know, shortly.